intercepted. Shaquille Griffin makes an incredible play. Looks out of the gun, runs the option, Got keeps it. it. He is into the end zone for the Knights touchdown. Welcome to Nightline Post Game Live. When the clock expires, we go live. Night Nation's only post game call in show goes live now. All right, Night Nation, this is Andrew Fagley coming to you from the 1148 Studios. This is Post Game Live. We haven't uh, had a situation like this in a while, but uh, my good friend Roger Knight Bengal is here to hang out with me. That we've He's been here watching the game with me and his son, Kirsten. Oh, boy. Well, it is what it is. What was the score, Roger? Uh, they ended up uh, scoring another touchdown in the last part. It was 42-32. Something like that. All right. 40-32. Loss in the Fiesta Bowl. It's, it's, I don't even know what to say, to be honest with you. It's been a long time since we've been in this situation. I did make some notes. Number one, I remember off of my notes, even though I don't have them pulled up, this is not Mac's fault. A lot of you will be blaming uh, Daryl Mack and saying that he wasn't prepared and that he couldn't do it and he wasn't good enough and we didn't have Mackenzie Milton. It's not Daryl Mack's fault. Uh, it, it, it's not really anybody's fault. Uh, what everybody predicted was that the offensive line couldn't handle their defensive line. That's pretty much true, and our off our defensive line couldn't handle their offensive line. That's pretty much the gist of this. I will say that penalties killed us, starting with Charlton and celebrating way too early. Uh, run game never got on. Not uh, run game never got going at all, and Gibson didn't help anything with a bonehead mistake and the targeting. And from then on, it was done, as far as I'm concerned. That's what I see. Phone lines are open, 407-401-9184, 407-401-9184. I know it's a little early. There's probably an all, not a lot of people even out of the stadium yet. But if you are sitting at home and, you know, drowning your sorrows with alcohol or whatever, just give us a call. Uh, Roger, Knight Bingle, what do you think? Well, I think this game was a game of missed opportunities, uh, for lack of a better term. I mean, realistically speaking, we had our chances and our um, our momentum takers at this point. When we when we talk about games like this, we talk about what is that one play that swings the game one way or the other. And I think we had multiple opportunities to swing it back the other direction. You mentioned Charlton; uh, that was a that was a, a drive killer and a momentum killer. But, um, you know, opportunities like Gabe's uh, pass in the end zone, he had a couple of opportunities to make uh, big catches that uh, would have swung it late in the game. Unfortunately, it didn't happen for us this time. We've had uh, 25 games where we've made those uh, catches when we needed to. We've had those opportunities. We've got those turnovers. We did what we needed to do when we needed to do it. And this time we just came up short. So for me... Um, you know, as you mentioned, the line play uh, was was big in this one. Um, you know, it wasn't really on Mac. Um, he didn't climb the ladder sometimes, but really our offensive line played a great defensive line. And as much as White and some of the other uh, linebackers and, and DBs were brought into and brought up, they really weren't a factor. I mean, it was really number 90, I don't remember what his name was, but getting into the backfield consistently um, that caused Mac to either step up or didn't have as much time to survey the field before he made those passes. So from the defensive side, really what we're looking at is the plays in the flat. Um, you know, our defensive line got pressure. We sold out on the run uh, or on the uh, pass rush. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't get home all the time on third downs, and, and that resulted to open players in the flat. Yeah, our third down percentage uh, on offense was not good, uh, by the way. I thought that we had it uh, in the beginning. 
I thought that uh, really, honestly, once we started, you know, in the the first couple series there, I really thought that we really had a good chance, and we could have been blown out by these guys a lot more than we were. So, unfortunately, I have the uh, post game press conference celebration crap on here right now, which I, I wish it was going the other way. And the last time we were looking at a Fiesta Bowl and it mattered at all, that was us up there with the trophy. Um, so offensive MVP is, is Macaulay Culkin. I mean, uh, evil Macaulay Culkin. What's his name? I don't know what his name is. Burrow. Burrow. Burrow threw more touchdowns in this game, uh, than he had really in the entire season. So, um, <laughs> he only had 12 touchdowns uh, in the air coming into this into this game, so that's a little disappointing. But uh, as soon as I can get logged in here to my ESPN account, I can really see what's going on. I know that we were not good on third down. Uh, <laughs> I think on offense we weren't good on a lot of things. So well, I mean, here here's a, a couple of things. One is you know you talked about that secondary and and him being able to throw those touchdowns. Um, Gibby went out early. Um, stupid play. Uh, he had the opportunity to get a hit on the quarterback, get a clean ho- a hit on the quarterback, and unfortunately, uh, he just made the wrong play. I know he's kicking himself, and he's been a great. Uh, defensive back for us for several years. Um, he was a uh, three or four borderline four star uh, coming out. We were excited to get him, and I know he's kicking himself as a senior going out on that play. Um, I know that our defensive backs in general, I mean, that put us at a disadvantage. And again, it, it was defensive scheme when you're crowding the box. All right, I'm going to call you all out that are on the uh, little the little chat thing here on YouTube that, that are commenting and not calling. Number one, uh, y'all are bashing me for saying that I didn't that we don't need a transfer quarterback, and you're bashing Max saying he's trash. Rob, call in, Rob. Let's talk about this. 401-407-401-9184. If you're just gonna talk trash on a on a chat thing, then then call in and talk it, because we we'll, we'll wait for your call, my friend. Uh, also, you know, I don't think that this is the last that you're going to see, obviously, of Daryl Mack. He's not a trash quarterback. Think about what he had to come in and do in this season. This is not something that, you know, what he did in the American Championship game was miraculous. Uh, and f- what he had to do today would have been another miraculous thing. This is what was expected of Daryl Mack. Uh, when you are the backup quarterback your entire career and you, you finally get to play, this is w- kind of what happens. He was 11 of 30, 97 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Uh, not horrible. Not horrible at all as far as I'm concerned. Well, it could have been a lot worse. Let's put it in McKenzie's perspective, right? So I remember vividly the Maryland game. I was there, right? Yeah. So he had a bunch of turnovers there. He came in late in the season. Uh, for Justin Holman, and you know he's a he's a redshirt sophomore. He's had three games under well two and a half games under his belt, and and this we're talking about Mac. I think he did fairly well. He he adds a good dynamic for us as far as the running game is concerned. Uh, he has the ability to uh, to pull it, and he and he doesn't go down right away. But realistically speaking, the dude's a redshirt sophomore with two and a half games under his belt. Uh, I did. I think he did fairly well. Well, next year he'll be a redshirt sophomore. He's a, redshirt, a redshirt freshman, freshman this, this year. year. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. So even more makes the point, right? But the, again, I think this goes back to the trenches. Um, you know, in the past he's had the opportunity to really scan the field, sit back there and look, and he didn't. He had to climb the ladder this time. I think there were uh, there were times where he could have felt the pressure just a tad. Uh, more quickly to get out of the pocket a little quicker or stepped up, but he'll learn that. I mean, dude's got a cannon of an arm. He put up some great passes that were right there. Um, he's a good quarterback. He he played in the Fiesta Bowl, a New Year's a New Year's Six Bowl. This is only the third one that UCF has ever played in. So saying asking him to do that and, and play as well as he did, I, I don't think that's really anything to say about him as a quarterback or his opportunity or his ability to mature I agree 110% thank you very much that was i mean seriously uh, 
Number one, you got to remember, and, and I have to remember sometimes, and I have to remind myself, these are kids playing this game. These are student athletes. These are not paid players. We can get into that if you really want to, but I don't really want to. I, I don't want to get into the, the paid players and all that crap on this. So the running game never got going, really. Uh, Greg McRae, 10 carries for 81 yards. Otis Anderson, 3 carries for 23 yards. Adrian Killens, 3 carries for 17 yards. Taj McGowan, 2 carries for 6 yards. Uh, Marlon Williams, 1 carry for 6 yards. Daryl Mack, 11 carries for minus 3 yards. 130 yards altogether there. That's where we have a huge mistake. Now, on the other hand, the defense... Holding these guys to 161 yards rushing LSU, that's pretty good as when, far as I'm concerned. Brosett had 117 yards, zero touchdowns. When you look at the time of possession, that's the other piece of it. So considering that, I mean, we had a hard time getting off the field on third downs. That's what really killed us. First and second down, we were getting after it. We were in the backfield. Um, Hayes had a heck of a game. I mean, he was in the backfield constantly with tackles and everything else. It was just getting off on those third downs and and them owning the time of possession. We knew that that was going to be a challenge for us. We knew that that was a, that was going to be their game plan going in, and it just happened. I mean, the big the the other big part of it is is how twenty six combined penalties, which is a new record for the Fiesta Bowl. Now I, I say that as being combined, but a lot of those swung against us. Um, we had some key uh, penalties in, in in really challenging spots for us, and, um, and and that really hurt us. So when you're looking at that and you're talking about momentum. Football is a game of momentum. We know that better than anyone. Uh, when we're on it and when we own the momentum, it's great. When we don't, it really kicks us in the nether regions. At this point, <laughs> however, <laughs> what I will say to that is if you look at what happened, and, and we still, despite all those penalties, despite the vaunted SEC line, despite all of these things, we still ended up with a seven-point game. Which yeah. is, by the way, better than what the line... Well, the last line that I saw was seven, so it had changed in like the last day or two. So uh, seven was the line. Pretty much that's where we were uh, right there. So At the end of the day, though, I mean, if you look at it, 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 what this game proves to me is that if you insert us into the SEC and you you play us against these other teams... We can play right with them, and that's with the team that we have today, which is, by the way, a young team. Most of the folks that we had on the offense are sophomores. So for me, it, it harkens to a bright future for us. Absolutely. What Mac did for us harkens to a bright future for us, and going into 2019 with the uncertainty surrounding McKenzie and everything else we had going on, I feel better about who Mac is today and who he can be uh, going forward and leading our offense. I made that comment to you during the game. I feel really good about the AAC play. Give Mac another season where he's playing an entire season, as we saw with McKenzie. Remember, he went six and six the next se- or six what was it? Six and six and then the bowl game the next season. And then we went undefeated. So And remember know. y'all booed McKenzie McMilton off the field at the Cure Bowl the last time we lost. Just so you know. And McKenzie was kind of coming in in the same situation as Daryl Mack was. Not with a big injury like this, but but he was coming in and, and nobody knew who he was and didn't know what he was capable of. And, and he was basically booed off the field. If I was in his shoes, I mean... We're lucky that he didn't transfer and go someplace else at that point, to be honest with you. Well, and he considered it. I know uh, he did. <laughs> uh, he, I mean, he cleaned out his room. Uh, he, he went, went uh, to stealth Hawaii mode, and was not Hawaii. coming back. 100%. And, right. and he came back, and, and I'm thankful for it, um, not just for his play this year, but also what he means to the team and what his family means to the team. Absolutely. Um, 100%. Gabe Davis on top of uh, Gabe Davis on top. Of that. That's another guy that Suddenly I'm Suddenly the back. comments on, on uh, the YouTube channel chat have stopped. Uh-oh. Shocking. And nobody's called yet. Come on, people. I know somebody wants to talk about this. 407-401-9184. 407-401-9184. If nobody calls, then, then we'll just make this short and uh, sweet, which is fine with me, personally. Uh, Pat Jasinski, total tackles 10, 7 solo. Um, Nate Evans, 
you know, the guy that I would give the defensive MVP to on our team honestly would be Brendan Hayes. Brendan Hayes, we were talking about him all day long uh, watching this game. By Absolute far. game. I mean, that guy was a beast. He was in the backfield constantly. And, and you know, Brendan, he, he hasn't been the first name that you talk about uh, when you talk about our defensive line. Um, I did notice that, it, and I had this as a note that I wrote down, is Tristan Hill was out on a lot of snaps in the second half. But from the start to the finish, Brendan Hayes was in the backfield constantly. Yeah. I mean, that man was disruptive, whether it was – you know, going back there and, and closing down lanes for running backs and making them run the opposite side of the line, or whether it was back there going for tackles for a loss or sacks, he was all over the place. He was a monster. Nate Evans also had a great game. Ten total tackles, six solo, uh, TFL, which is uh, tackles is for tackle a loss. For loss. <laughs> Sorry. There's a little alcohol involved today, by the way. Uh, had one of those as well. Uh, Sacks, I thought that there was more, but the official stats only show two, which is interesting. Eric Mitchell and uh, Kyle Gibson. So I don't, I mean, he must have been out of the pocket a little bit running uh, to, to, you know, I guess that's that's what that means. That's exactly what it means because Brendan Hayes uh, and those guys were back in the backfield, especially early on, consistently. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, I don't know, I mean... I guess we were kind of worn out here. Let's see what third down, 6 of 15 for UCF. Fourth down, 0 for 1. Total plays, 61. LSU had 86 plays. Time of possession. Let's look at that. Where is that at here? Oh, my gosh. These I'm, I'm looking at different stats than I normally do. Maybe I should go back to old faithful stats here. Because the stats that the Fiesta Bowl themselves, their official stat thing, let's see, where is it? Dang it. Here, I should get it right here. Time of possession, four, oh, geez, 44 minutes and 31 seconds. And you know what that means. 15 minutes and 29 seconds in this entire game is what we had the ball for. So Coach Ogeron, or whatever his name is, Coach O., Called it, and that's what he wanted to do, and that's what he did. He wanted the possession to be theirs, and it was. Absolutely. They had 555 yards in this game, LSU did. We had 250. Two two turnovers apiece, but that time of possession thing will kill you every single time. They had 32 first downs. We had 17. Well, look at it from this perspective, too, right? For us to keep pace, we would have had to uh, maintain seven and a half possessions scoring possessions if we had 15 minutes and we scored on every single one on average we're we're just under two minutes on a scoring possession so that would have meant seven and a half scores so when you look at the turnovers and you look at the other pieces I mean we did what we did with the offensive time that we had had we had more possessions you know that's a function of both our ability to stay on the field and since we got off on third downs we've kind of talked about that what's our third down percentage if it if it has it over there for the Uh, offense well Six of fifteen. So now, now consider have percentage, this. but well, you can six do the of math fifteen. There. Well, well, we'll do the math real quick. Six of fifteen is forty percent, which is well below our average. Yeah, we were uh, we were top ten, if I'm not, uh, or top ten or top twenty in uh, third down conversion percentage um, for um, for the entire nation. So that's about. 10 or, or 15 percent below oh, what that we time average. of possession though is what that that's crazy i've never seen that before to be honest with you with with one of our games it being that much of a difference that's huge and that and that's where the game was won right there 100 percent. even even in the last uh last series right so when we had the added opportunity when gabe uh, dropped a couple of passes he dropped that one that was a surefire touchdown um you know that that whole that was a 70-yard or 80-yard uh, possession that went down in a matter of 45 seconds. So we have the ability to score that way. However, if our offense can't stay on the field, if we don't, we, we live or die by those big plays. And when we don't get those uh, big plays, then then that's a problem, especially when the running game isn't established. And, yeah. and we haven't had that, you know, we didn't have the ability to do that. I was surprised 
we didn't go more towards the sideline to sideline a little bit with Killens. We didn't see a well, whole lot of him. I mean, him, I wouldn't but... be surprised by that. The people keep saying they're they're surprised by that, and and I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm just saying. That's not what we do in this offense. Oh, 100% Nearly agree. as much as we did before. And so I think people are going to have to get used to that a little bit. That's not what it's about. It's about downhill running and downfield passing. And I agree. The question is... It's is, just different. ...is when you come up with a defensive line whose strength is between the tackles and stopping the run between the tackles, what do you game plan against that? Now, now don't get me wrong. You saw the game plan change, Right. We saw all kinds of crazy formations. We saw that really cool halfback pass at the beginning of the game. So Hypel had some stuff installed that we hadn't seen before and LSU hadn't seen before. I kept making the mention. It reminded me of the Memphis game. I don't know why we didn't keep going with some of that, though, to oh, be honest 100% with you. agree. I, I think that that's one of the things that, that we should have kept going with a little bit. It's just weird. Like, I don't even remember the last time we talked uh, about a loss on, on any of these shows. I mean, the last time that we talked about one was the Cure Bowl th- two years ago, literally. Oh, 100%. And, <laughs> and so let's, it's let's, crazy. let's 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 take a, a you know a, a piece from that too. These guys gave us 25 straight wins. Yep. And the last time that it's was been a hell of a ride. Oh, I mean, it's it been has. a hell of a ride. And you know what? I still and it can start all over again in September or October or uh, September or August or or whatever it is this year it can start all over again we can do it again 100% agree i mean you've got offensive line pieces that are stepping up um, you know, we got Jordan Johnson back. We've got uh, Cole Schneider stepping up. Sam Jackson's back. That offensive line's going to be strong again. It was strong this year, and we'll we got be strong some recruits again. that are going to be good in that. This is—it's not the end of the world. The the sky is not falling. I've said this before. You know, it's not the end of the world. It's I, just the just the end of a season, and it was a hell of a season. And that and that's it. And it's not like we got embarrassed, right? Absolutely not. So I think you know, I, I think a lot of people, and this is what really bugs me. The the uh, you know the whole thing was was our narrative in in playoff inclusion, right? That was the whole conversation going into this. Um, if you ask me the same question again, do I believe that we should have been included in the playoff? 100%. Yep. Look at what happened with Notre Dame. Yep. Look at what happened with Oklahoma. Right. Right? So, for me, I think we Could won- we have done a better job than those two teams? 100%, I think I we would I think so, have. too. So, you know, from that perspective... This is an LSU team that when they played Alabama didn't score a point. Not one point. Agreed. And they <laughs> held them under 30, yeah. right? So, again, our streak continues, right? We we, we beat the 30-point spread. Yep. Um, uh, again, it was just a, a game of possessions, and unfortunately this time the ball didn't bounce our way. Um, that time, of, I still go back to that time of possession. That is the thing that is th- that slit our throat immediately. 44 minutes to 15 minutes. That's insane. But that goes back to penalties and third down yeah, conversions. It does. I mean, at the yeah. end of the day, that's what it boils down to. If we can't stay on the field to continue those drives, then we can't do it. Again, 12 penalties for 104 yards. They they had 14 penalties for 145 yards, so that, that should have set them back a little bit more than it did. But, wow. So, all right, well... We're going to take a little break here, and we will be right back. You've heard us talk about the great food at our good friend Kyle Israel's restaurant, The Little Greek Fresh Grill. The Little Greek now has franchises available. Please call 407-697-2272. That's 407-697-2272 to see what The Little Greek can do for you. Also check out The Little Greek's newest location at 3131 Daniels Road, Suite 104, Winter Garden, Florida. The Little Greek Fresh Grill. Fresh, flavorful, fabulous. Hey, this is Travis Dever, Kai's Real Estate, the Dever team, New Smyrna Beach. Your source for real estate and everything else, New Smyrna Beach. Proud sponsor of Nightline and Nightline Post Game Live. Call me anytime at 386-690-1636. That's 386-690-1636. Let me show you my hometown, New Smyrna Beach, UCF's favorite beach. Go Knights and charge on. 
All right, we're back. Post game live. This is Andrew Fegley at the 1148 Studios. Joining me this time is not Trace Trilco. <laughs> no, this is Roger, a.k.a. Night Bangle. Um, uh, let me try that again. Not Trace Trilco. <laughs> so uh, that was my best in, in impression. Adam, eat your heart out. All right. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking at the uh, the... Oh, what do you want to call it? This chat on uh, YouTube here, and there's a couple people. Uh, I can't believe the penalties we had in the first half. And then this person also said, thanks for the great podcast, guys. Always look forward to it. And uh, this other person is, is saying, call in. This is what this is all about. Uh, 407-401-9184. 407-401-9184. Uh, Karsten's here also. Night Bengals kid, do you want to say something? Step over there and you can say something. Talk into that mic with him. Make sure you call in. There you go. All right. Well, he wanted to experience this part of it. So um, let me let me say this about that. Just kind of you know, as a as a father, and uh, I, I don't want to get too emotional because I know how you get Andrew, <laughs> but as a father and, and having a son and a daughter who's not here with us. Um, who enjoy UCF football, um, as much as we get emotional. Oh, you're going to make me cry, uh, dude. I'm not, Stop. I'm not trying. I'm not trying. Oh, my God. But, uh, but <sighs> you know, for me and for a lot of people that are out there experiencing this, whether you made it to the Fiesta Bowl or you're watching at a watch party or you're at home, uh, this is something we experience together. So, you know, it, it provides an opportunity for me to spend time with my son and, and my daughter because they both go to games. And we are season ticket holders, and we will be next year. Um, the, these guys and everything they put into it and the effort and the well, – literally, you've experienced it before at a quote-unquote P5 level, Andrew. Uh, and I've played uh, football, um, not, not at that level, but, uh, you know, I was recruited for Army and a few other things. But the point is, is the amount of time, effort – uh, between school and and working on these things that that are put into it, these kids do this for us. And and you see things like um, the the families that are involved. We've had the opportunity to speak to the uh, to the families that are involved with these kids. You know, for us to be able to do this together and, and thank UCF, thank uh, the Eric DeSalvos of the world, thank you to the players, Andy of the world, Seely, Andy Seely's, all these guys. Yep. We are one uh, night nation, for Ohana. lack of a better time. Ohana, exactly. We we live or die. We we do this together. We believe in these kids. We believe in the coaching staff, right? So despite the fact that we're all Monday morning quarterbacks, we believe in what they're doing, and the results speak on the field, and they've created so many memories, including this Peach Bowl. Or, I'm sorry, the Peach Bowl and, <laughs> and this Fiesta Bowl, right? I think so, we would have been better off if we were in the Peach oh, Bowl. Oh, Florida. Again. Oh, Florida. Lord. So uh, the, the point is, you know, <sighs> and the point I'm trying to make is these kids put their heart and soul into it. We support them 100% because and people, not just the players, but also the leaders are on – feel like us. They're just like the fans. They believe in what we're building and who we are. This is just another stepping stone towards that. And I get to experience this with my son. He's here. He's listening to it. He's, he's another generation that's growing up night fans. And, and he gets to experience it a different way than I did. Uh, you know what's cool? During this recruiting season, uh, it was mentioned a couple times about one kid that sat in the stands with his family and was recruited by UCF, and he signed, and that's why. Because he had sat there for so long. <laughs> Matt Lee, right? Yeah. That's just cool. Stuff like that is cool. This whole thing is building another generation of football fans. <sighs> so so saying that, right? So, I get emotional when I talk about this stuff. I do. And, and he's not kidding. I'm looking at him, and he's tearing up right now, and he's all, all pinked and welled up. And, uh, you know, when Trace is talking about this, he, he's real. And, and that, ah, that embodies. Somebody's calling. Oh, Finally, let's hey. take this call. Lord have mercy. Hopefully I don't hang up on him. Hey, you're on Nightline Post Game Live. Thank you for calling. Yeah, I was starting to feel sorry for you. <laughs> well, I was too. I mean, come on. I mean, if nobody wants to talk about this, what's the point of me doing this? 
Yeah, I heard that. <clears throat> well, listen, yeah, I, I watched the game, obviously disappointed, but uh, very, very proud of, of the team and the whole the whole program is the way they've handled this the last two years. And I know we have a lot of haters, uh, you know, outside of UCF, but we also have a lot of a lot of uh, very devoted uh, fans for such a young university. And I just want to uh, compliment Danny White and and the president and, and John Hitt, the, the ex-president, and everybody at UCF for how they they have handled this and how they put UCF in the forefront of all the conversations, regardless of what the SEC likes and doesn't like. <clears throat> We're very, very proud of them, and uh, and I'm looking forward to another undefeated season next year. And also, before I forget, I also, Andrew, I want to say that you and Trace do a phenomenal job, and because of what you guys do, I am able, and by the way, I'm 72 years old, I'm able to, on my morning walks, listen to you every every uh, week, and I thoroughly love listening to you, and it actually gets me around my walk without me even knowing how far I'm going, because I'm just so interested. You guys do a phenomenal job, and I think the whole UCF community should uh, to uh, stand up and applaud for what you guys do. You bring UCF right into our homes. So Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Danny White, everybody's doing a wonderful job. This is just the beginning of what's going on. This is not, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to talk a lot of crap in the next couple of weeks. All those SC fans are rejoicing now. But yeah, that's, that's right. not what this is all about. This is about the beginning of our thing. It's it's not about the end of it, you know. Uh I don't know what else, but well, I, I think you, thank you very much, by the way, for for saying the kind words. I appreciate it. So let me yeah, say, yeah, well, it's 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 well deserved. And you know, you said one thing earlier, and, and I was telling my wife the same thing. You know, uh, today it looked like you know Mac was uh, throwing the ball a little bit high to his receivers, Trey Nixon, and they, they couldn't get to it. And I thought, do you remember back when you and I went to the Cure Bowl? And I remember the day that uh, McKenzie uh, got booed. You know, and he was throwing the ground. He was throwing him over again we said man we gotta get a quarterback this guy isn't even accurate you know and he turned out the very next year to be the most accurate quarterback in the nation so you know don't give up on daryl that's exactly what you said and i agree daryl is a fine kid and with that build yeah he looks a little bit like justin holman out there but i think he's got a little bit more skill but uh, we, I think we're going to be very, very talented at quarterback. We got Dylan coming in <clears throat> as a backup. We got uh, the hope and prayers of, of McKenzie uh, maybe in a couple years. And with this experience and Daryl being number one uh, starting out next year, who knows where this team could go. Well, I love yeah. how you said so, that. Well, so I'm I... very pro UCF uh, for next year right now. Can I ask you a question? Okay, so my my twelve year this is Night Bangle. My twelve year old son is here, right? So he's he's the future, yeah. and and you've lived it uh, from farther back than I have because I I graduated the first time in ninety nine, and I graduated the second time with my master's degree later on. But I I grew up uh-huh. in the Wackadoo's days, you know, l- watching trying to find football games on on Wackadoo's. Is there any words from you to him? Uh, as we kind of progress through uh, our maturation as a, as a fan base and, and as a program, what would you say to him? Well, you know, I, I, think, I think what you've got to look at is where, you know, where did this all start and where have we come from? And, and as Danny said the other day, I think I saw it on video at the um, New Year's, uh, one of the New Year's parties, you know, we're putting out 16,000 graduates uh, every year. You know, it's going to, it's the largest uh, fan base uh, around. And, you know, that stadium is not going to be large enough. We are going to have to put a second deck on that stadium eventually <clears throat> because the fan base has just continued to grow. And, you know, the, 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 the spirit and the support and the confidence that these fans have shown, especially over the last two years, everybody loves a winner, but, you know, they have come together. And, they, and it's like one team, one heart, exactly. And, you know, if, if those youngsters can start uh, – Becoming and staying UCF fans instead of the Gators and the Knowles and the Canes, you know, then the youth movement is going to make a big difference. That's the one thing that these that the older schools have. They have that, they have that history, and the third, fourth generations of Gators and Knowles, you know, and UCF is still young, but now we're starting to get into that second, third generation, and and it's 
it's 12, 13, 14 year old boys that need to wear those UCF shirts, you know, and start that tradition. And he does every day, and he's currently wearing one right now. So we'll, we'll, we'll say that for sure. <laughs> and I am too. And you know, and you know, I, I, we're, we're my wife and I. We were retired down here in Florida, but you know, we're we're from Indiana uh, originally, and um, and of course I root for you know my my Hoosiers, but you know we don't play football too well. You know we play football like uh, Kansas <laughs> does, Andrew. Oh, but, no. <laughs> No, I can't. Hey, they got less miles. Less miles. Less miles. Less miles is coming. It's going to be good. It's going to come back. It'll come back. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, um, you know, but uh, my grandson ended up coming down here five years ago and played for UCF. And my wife and I, of course, we had to go to every game and travel to Louisville. We went to Phoenix last year. Uh, um, in 2013, mm-hmm. you know, so, so we, we really, and we became so involved, not just because of, from the family connection, you know, we got to know this school. We got to know a little bit of, you know, George O'Leary. We got to meet and talk with Scott Frost and, you know, it, it just grows on you, this program, you know, and I didn't go to UCF. It does. I it's the same, it's the same way and, with you know, me. And, and, You've and heard me say, with UCF. <laughs> You've heard me say it a million times. I mean, I didn't, I wasn't born into this program. I wasn't born into this university. I didn't go here. I love it, though. Yeah. I mean, I love it. Yeah. I came and I saw and, and I, I loved it. So. You conquered. <laughs> well. and, it's, and it's very obvious. It's very obvious. I mean, I know, I know because I listen to you guys all the time, and I know you played at, at Kansas. You know, so you really don't have that, that graduate uh, link to UCF, you know, like uh, uh, Nightbingle does there. But, um, um, you know, and that's that's one of the advantages. I mean, people, you know, see this brand, and they're starting to fall in love with this. Man, you see us, you see us. A lot of people that I'm around know, knew the connection, and they said, well, you see us, you're doing good. I'm really rooting for them, you know. And i got to tell you, six, seven years ago, they wouldn't have said that. They'd say, now, exactly, are they in Tampa or are they in Orlando? You know what I'm saying? Right. Oh, 100% and agree. It, the brand has grown, and we are, you know, we're, we're, we're known. UCF is now known as UCF, not just that school in, in Central Florida somewhere. Well, I think the word so. that, you, that you use that encapsulates that is we, right? So what you're hearing a lot of people say now is we. And um, I, I think that one of the things that has kind of propelled us forward is that we've we've got the exposure now we're winning consistently and yes we just took a loss but we're still winning consistently 25 and 1 is a damn good record in any uh FBS uh record book the point being absolutely the point being is is that it's the we it's about the we Danny White is about the we we are about the we I'm about the we my son is about the we you are about the we and and the fact is is that and I'm just going to pull something, Eric DeSalvo, uh, just to just to kind of encapsulate this. Eric DeSalvo pulled a, a tweet recently that showed the interactions that UCF fans had. There were 179,000 follows on their Twitter account. Alabama had over 900,000. Okay. Yeah. Um, the top <laughs> 10 had over over 700, 500,000. All of them had more than us. We had more interactions. Yeah. Okay, we were number six in interactions with 179,000. So ten times the amount of followers. But the people that are here are engaged, involved. They care, and that's what's going to propel us forward as we move along. And like you said, it's it's multiple generations and people like you, uh, and your family uh, that has invested in UCF. We've we've had Andrew and I have both have the, had the privilege of of meeting uh, families, the Jasinskis, the Laudermilks, et cetera, um, that we've had the right. opportunity to meet with those folks. And, and at the end of the day, uh, what it's about is, is what we believe and what we feel, and um, and who we are, whether we graduated or not. You're part of the family. Right, exactly, and you know, and I've got a and I've got a daughter uh, in Southeast Tennessee. I've also got a son that lives over on the west side of Tennessee, and all three of us, including my wife, we're all sending um, picture text pictures of ourselves in our night gear before the game. We're all saying we are ready to go. You know, I mean, there's people in West Tennessee and Southeast Tennessee pulling for UCF. Are you on Twitter? <laughs> 
Are you on Twitter at I all? I am. I am on Twitter. Please yeah, send me yeah, one I of follow, those. I follow, I follow you. All right. Please send me one of those pictures of you and your family in your UCF gear. Sure. All yeah, right. Sure. Hey, thank you so much yeah, for but, your call. I really appreciate it. I really yeah. appreciate the kind things that you said about oh, yeah. our show and all that, and I appreciate that it gets you through your walks because uh, yeah, that's a big, important thing to be doing and, and keeping physically fit and all that stuff. So Absolutely. That so makes you keep me, up the good work. It makes me feel good. Thank you very much. And all go right. Knights. Right. Bye-bye. Go Knights. Charge on. Well, all right. Well, that was awesome. <sighs> but if, that, if that's the only phone call we have during this, I'm perfectly fine with it. Hey, let me say this good about that. I think that goes to show uh, who we are. You know, a, a lot of people are trying to define us by this game. Uh, a lot of people tried to label us by this game. But I think what this does... And, oh, and, oh we got another one. phone call! Woo! Hey, you're on Nightline Post Game Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is uh, Tim from Connecticut. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm sorry. Sunday is uh, obviously our blue a ones. little bit uh, disappointed in the uh, the outcome of the game, but uh, it being New Year's and everything, I just wanted to uh, say I am a uh, long time listener, first time caller, and I just wanted to extend a really big thank you to you guys for uh, for everything that you do, both you, Andrew, uh, and also Trace, um, Adam, and uh, UCF Mike at the uh, Sons of UCF, and uh, also all of your guests, you know, uh, Kyle and Nick, and uh, heck, even uh, TJ. LSU dad, uh, you guys have been <laughs> thoroughly entertaining, uh, and I really appreciate everything that you've done for uh, for us alumni. All right, man, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Uh, what are your comments on the game besides that? You know, I don't have uh, I don't have a lot of, a lot to say about the game. I still have to kind of process that, but I'll, I'll tell you this: I graduated in 2011, and now that wasn't a long time ago. But when I first came to UCF as a transfer student from Connecticut, I, uh, I didn't know much about college football, and I watched my first college football game in Bright House Stadium. Now, there wasn't really a great way to watch college football, uh, more specifically UCF games, uh, when we were at, you know, our different conference foes back at, in Conference USA. I used to have to try to, you know, find uh, some crazy website to watch or something else when we were on TV. So uh, one thing I'll say is this. Uh, a lot of people might, might be hanging their heads low, but if you were to tell me back in 2011 when I graduated that, you know, we'd, we'd have lost one game in 26, and that would be by uh, one possession to LSU, we'd have a, a whole bunch of conference championships. Every one of our games would be on ESPN. I'd get to, you know, personally attend a college game day. Uh, I'd take that, and I think a lot of our fans would. So, uh, you know, everybody out there listening is kind of hanging their heads low. Uh, you know, I think this is really just the beginning. And the fact that, you know, we can go out there and compete play after play with all these guys with their huge athletic budgets. Uh, and that's another thing, too, you know, uh, the uh, the narrative really shouldn't be if, if UCF can't beat LSU in the uh, Fiesta Bowl that all of a sudden the, the college football playoff uh, format is somehow validated. I think we've proven uh, that we can hang with just about anybody. LSU is a phenomenal team. I think UCF is a phenomenal team, and, uh, you know, I'll be a fan for life. Absolutely. Right on, man. Charge on. Yeah, I Thank you, guys. And I appreciate you saying that, right, because I think the narrative going out of this game is not – what we lost, but what we're striving towards, right? Where we've come from and where we're headed. Um, I, I know right. that for me, like personally, right? I, I've I've been through the George O'Leary up and down years. I've been through uh, uh, before you. Clearly, I've got more gray hair. Um, but the the point is, is you know, you, you go through the Citrus Bowl, and I remember the Bowl Queen, and and all of these different things. And there were twenty five thousand people in the stands, right? And and this year we've got twenty five thousand season ticket holders. So let that sink in a little bit. We're building something, and we're not building something that's going to go away. I like to liken us a lot on on social media and whatnot to Miami, right? Because we're the people that make you angry because we we question uh, the the establishment. And, and for me, I'm proud of that, and I, and I think that that makes me more of a fan than anything else because I've been able – I haven't been able to experience all the firsts, but we are making what UCF football is going to be going forward. We're looking back on all of those uh, historical 
uh, memories. And, and none of the other fan bases get to do that. And I love hearing the passion from a 72-year-old from Indiana that's calling us, you know, um, about uh, who lives in Tennessee, about how many people are wearing their, their black and gold in, in Tennessee to, to you, who graduated in 2011 after I did. And, and this is, you know, going to be passed on to my son. So uh, I love hearing Absolutely. that, and I love hearing that narrative, and I love hearing the pride because it wasn't always there. And I, and I live up in New England, and I've had a lot of Christmas parties in New York and Connecticut and Vermont, and I, I you know, I tell them I, I went to UCF, and, and they no longer ask me, oh, are those the Gators? Uh, they know who UCF is. LSU obviously knew who UCF is. Uh, Auburn learned from that mistake. Baylor uh, learned from that mistake. And, and I think that the fact that LSU was so prepared for us uh, speaks volumes. They they, don't, they take us seriously. Uh, they no longer take us as a as a as a you know um, just a one season wonder, a spark. Uh, you know. So I, I think that uh, you know this. There were a lot of positives to take away from today, even though the uh, the result wasn't exactly what we wanted. Well, All right. yeah, go ahead, Andrew. Well, thank you, man, for your call. Really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you for uh, the kind words. We will keep going, and uh, we'll do this. So charge on. Go next. All right. Well, awesome. All right. Well, it, it's good that now we have some callers. Uh, in 20 seconds, if there's another one, we may have more. So uh, hopefully Trace will give us a call, too. He's probably in the press conferences still. We're talking with some players, so we'll have that on Sunday, the next next week, obviously. Yeah, here we and go. And there's a call. Hey, you're on Nightline Post Game Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? You might want to turn your radio down. Hello. In the background. You're on. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hi, what's going on? Hi, thank you guys so much for taking our call. Go Knights, Chards are on, go even Knights. though today didn't go our way. All right, so what are your thoughts about uh, the game? Well, I want to say that as a longtime UCF fan since 2004, started in the Citrus Bowl, and here we are, I could not be more proud of our team. I could not be more proud of our university. I could not be more proud of our fans. It was so amazing. The game itself, there was a lot of ups, there was a lot of downs. You know, I we could go into the specific details, but I am sure you guys will have lots of podcasts and lots of time to talk about all of that stuff during this off season. So I'll let you guys do that kind of work. Um, but all in all, we only lost by eight points. That's amazing. That you know, it was great. We hung in there with with Mac. Third start in his career. I thought he did all things considered not his best game. It wasn't his Memphis performance. I'm really hoping he'll grow this off season. But we only lost by eight points. Everybody on the Twitter universe can give it to us. They can say, oh, they had a wide receiver for their cornerback. All these people got ejected. But you know what? It wasn't our best game, and we still only lost by eight. That's a lot to be proud of. Absolutely. Hey, you never told us your name and where you were calling from. Oh, my name's Allie, and I'm calling from Orlando. All right. Well, that's good. Thank you for calling, Allie. I really appreciate it. Now, I have a question for you guys. What did you think about the announcers today? They were horrible. They were all SEC the entire day. You it was, clearly it was don't insane. follow me on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I, like, this is so awful. I was, I could not believe how horrible it was. Like, Danny White needs to start a petition against these announcers. We're going all in against this, the college playoff expansion. We need to go in against this SEC announcer. Well, that was the SPN, and, and that's, you know, who runs the entire thing except for the committee. So that's, that's what that was all about. These are guys that, that call SEC games all the time. And they're the first ones to discredit us anytime they have a chance. So it doesn't shock me. You're the ones putting to get our colors right. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I think uh, I think the important part of that ESPN moniker is entertainment. 
right? So uh, as we listen to these guys, and unfortunately they shape a lot of the narrative of what people are listening to across the nation, at the end of the day, they're employees of a company that um, that are, are in charge of entertainment. It drove me absolutely bat crazy. Uh, I'm skipping the middle part of that. <laughs> um, you know, listening to them talk about it, and, and what really is funny, because I made this comment right before we went on the air to Andrew, the uh, the the narrative was, hey, they're great, they had a great season, yada, 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 and not playoff contenders. I'm sorry, Notre Dame was not a playoff contender. They deserved to be there Absolutely because they were not. undefeated, but... I'm sorry, we we deserve that place. And Oklahoma didn't deserve deserve to be there either. So uh, you know, so whatever. Uh, that was the best bowl game so far absolutely. that I've watched. Yeah, me too. I've watched Memphis all of them. Is coming in second. Yeah. So there's your two ACC te- or your AAC teams, and so so far two AAC AAC teams have given you the best bowl game. Yeah, Cincinnati won theirs as well. Well, you got to remember, too, right? We're going into a TV negotiation, too. So that's something you have to remember um, with ESPN, and it's their job to make sure that, uh, you know, that we are at a disadvantage um, when it comes to the negotiations. But at the end of the day, um, the bottom line is it doesn't matter what they say. Um, it matters what we do and who we are. And, and I think that voice is gotten to the point now uh, it wasn't in the past, but it's gotten to the point now where it won't be silenced. So, you know, listening to, to these commentators, yes, I, I 100% agree with you. Uh, I was telling Andrew this before. I wrote it on my Twitter account uh, during the game, and, and I thought about it after, and I mentioned it after. They were absolutely atrocious. They didn't know very much about us. They talked about LSU the entire game. Uh, it drove me absolutely bat crazy, fill in the blank there. Um, but at the end of the day... Um, that voice, that voice that you, the 72-year-old we talked to from Indiana, he didn't give us our na- his name, our, our friend from Connecticut, um, it, it won't be silenced. I think we've gotten to the point where that's reached a, a fever pitch. All right. Thank you, Allie. Really appreciate it. Happy New Year. Charge on. Go Knights. Happy New Year to you guys, too. Charge on. <laughs> Take it easy. Thank you. All right. Well, that was cool. And thank you for calling. If I can turn this thing off, oh my god! All right, I think we got oh, another Lord call. Mercy. We got no, another call. No? I just can't get it to turn off. All right, All I right, pushed the wrong goes. button. Sometimes uh, with this phone system, I hit the wrong button. So, so what that means is, is that we've got an open line, and we'd appreciate you guys. There may be call. another one though, because my phone system there, there it is. is. Yeah, it gives me phone call. Oh, this is this is a good one. Hey, uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Trace in Glendale, Arizona. It's Trace Trilco. Trace Trilco, how you doing? Uh, I've been better. <laughs> <laughs> Night Bingle been is better. with me. I've sitting... forgotten what it's like to lose the game, which I think really is one of the underlying themes today. 745 days, I believe it is, since UCF last suffered a loss, and this one stung. It did. A lot of what ifs. Absolutely. What was your perspective of, like, fan base and stuff like that there at the game? Uh, Certainly not a sellout. Uh, You know, quite a few red seats look like a uh, cow's home game at times uh, with the empty uh, red seats. But I'd say from what I could tell, it felt like a 50-50 distribution, Uh, you know, certainly on the lower bowl. Upper Bowl, people wanted to congregate closer to their team. So, you know, you could see a lot of black and gold on the Upper Bowl uh, on the UCF side and certainly more purple on the Upper Bowl on the uh, uh, LSU side. Uh, just out of the post game, you have to make a decision when you're one guy and it's either chase Coach Heupel and some of the earmarked players or have locker room access. And I chose the uh, the locker room access and, I uh, spoke with Kyle Gibson. Of course, he not very happy uh, with his ejection from this. That's back-to-back bowl games for him. But he and, and all of the players, the seniors in particular, think the future is bright. Mac Loudermilk uh, talking to me after the game saying that this run, 25 straight by these UCF Knights, have really 
solidified UCF as Orlando's hometown team. And, and I, I think he's right about that. I think his legacy and that of the seniors and others is, is really going to endure, and, and the future is bright for this team. Um, and, uh, by the way, Mark uh, Milton says hello, Andrew. I just spoke with him. Oh, okay. uh, he was uh, visiting with McKenzie, chatted with McKenzie. Since McKenzie didn't play, he's not allowed uh, to give an official interview, but I did chat with him a little bit just uh, to say hi, and his spirits are upbeat. That's who everybody wants to get a picture taken with. They're still taking photos with him uh, over here now where the uh, players are uh, getting with their families and their friends that were here uh, for the game. And, uh, you know, bittersweet locker room. Uh, certainly uh, you could see the emotion. Taj McGowan was down on one knee at the end of the game fighting back tears for the seniors it's the end of the end of the run for everyone else so you got to think the future looks bright uh, despite all the mistakes this is a team that put up 30 plus points again and finishes eight point shot hey uh trace this is roger aka night bengal um I just uh, had a quick question from you from a culture perspective. So knowing what uh, these seniors left uh, going out of this year, and unfortunately it didn't end with an a undefeated season, but that culture that they've built, um, how do you feel that, that the, the locker room now and, and going forward, how do they benefit and how they move forward, and, and what was that impact for them going forward? Well, I think the impact can be strong, but you can see that, you know, five years ago I was in the same stadium watching UCF win the Fiesta Bowl over Baylor, and and your fortunes can change quickly. We all endured the uh, 0-12 season, but I think the culture, especially Danny White, who we had an opportunity to speak with, he, he said, you know, one loss is not going to diminish all that this team has accomplished, and that's certainly the case. So I think from a culture standpoint, it has been transformative. I don't feel UCF uh, and the Orlando community have ever been as unified as they are now. Uh, you know, this is a, this is a blip. There There is much to build on from this, and uh, you know that phrase, instead of rebuild, reload, uh, I think this is a UCF team that's in a position to keep reloading and continue to be a force, not only in the American, but certainly in the top 25 landscape. I love that. The reload. I, I think that should be the theme going for next year, right? Because <laughs> it's, it's yeah. – Well, got, yeah, I mean, I, you know, no a program to uh, in the American uh, can can get knocked down. I mean, we've seen it. You know, look, Houston fires their coach after 15 and 11. Look, our, our rivals over in Tampa start out the year 7-0 and and they tumble. You can struggle, and then you have to rebuild. I, I'd like to think off the recruiting class that – UCF has just inked in the early signing period that this really is opportunity to reload and come back, be a dominant force. I don't know where they get ranked, and we'll have opportunity to talk about that on Nightline Sunday, where they get ranked preseason or where their final ranking will be. I know there are a lot of haters out there that want to relish in this. Uh, my recommendation all Nightline fans and UCF fans, stay off Twitter for a while. Uh, your, your mentions are going to be lit up uh, with people wanting to hate on UCF, but that's really burnished us in the college football landscape. Uh, I think the program is strong with Danny White and with Josh Heupel and the rest of the coaches, uh, and uh, I think the future continues to be bright. What about your overall experience out there during the week? You were out there for a couple days. Uh, what was the experience like of the Fiesta Bowl not being a complete fan but being a little bit a part of the media? How was it all handled? Uh, oh, certainly it's professional. Uh, with back-to-back -back experiences, uh, being on the media side of it, uh, I'd say that the, the way the Peach Bowl was organized was certainly uh, media-friendly, perhaps more media-friendly. I think it helped that everything was just located in that central downtown corridor in Atlanta. You could, you could walk from one thing to the next. Here, things are more spread out. The media hotel is 45 minutes from the stadium. I mean, if you've not been to Phoenix, it's a big place. So, you know, to get from one side to another, we, we gripe about traffic and the like in central Florida, but uh, Phoenix is a big city that's really spread out. So from Glendale to Scottsdale, it's, it's quite a haul. Uh, but first class all the way, and uh, I think the fans uh, have had a good experience as well. You can certainly tell from all of the, the pregame partying and the days leading up to it. Uh, you know, UCF Night Nation knows how to have a good time. <laughs> Well, they Absolutely. have to at that price for the for the plane tickets, right? Yeah, yeah, they had to uh, for the price they paid to get out there. So, all right, Trace, uh, 
uh, safe travels back, and we will see you on Sunday at the 1148 Studios. All right, go Knights. Charge on. Charge on. All right, that's our man on the uh, scene there, Trey Strelko. I don't know how much long. I don't I have no idea how long we've been doing this. I normally try to keep this at an hour, but uh, I don't know. If we keep getting some calls, I guess we'll keep going for a little while. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, going back to what, what Trace was saying, and an overall theme was reload versus rebuild, right? So we've had uh, many years as a team where we've had to rebuild. Um, we've all experienced the up and downs with George O'Leary. Um, I think maybe we've turned the corner, and and it's more about rebuilding. Uh, I think, you know, when we talk team versus program, um, I, I think this program is on the right trajectory. You've heard a lot of people use that term, um, both from Danny White's perspective and also being able to plug in the right coaches and leadership to continue that culture. And um, yeah, I, I love that theme going into – 20 well quote unquote 2019 because it'll be the 2019 2020 season hopefully we're in another new year six bowl uh next season but i, I feel like you know as as a longtime ucf fan um as a as someone who has seen owen 15 who's seen the other side of the other undefeated season right and um i th i know that we're in a much better place now and and i feel like uh, going forward, uh, we've got a lot of young folks coming back. Sophomores that'll be juniors, some juniors that'll be seniors, but mostly sophomores that'll be juniors. So this same team, these same kids that you're going to see on offense are going to be there next year. And um, and I do feel like, you know, going back to what Andrew said with the recruiting classes, we've got, uh, uh, look at Randy Charlton. Okay, how many times did we call his name tonight? Other than that, that one penalty. Yeah. Uh, how many times did we yeah. see him in the backfield tonight? Absolutely. Right. So we've got we've got a bunch of guys coming in that uh, that I feel like will be able to be those people for us. So um, you know, going forward, the, the the future is bright, and and again, it's all about reloading, not about rebuilding. All right, a quick break here, and we'll be right back. Spice up your company with homemade marketing services from Tasty Gravy Creative. Tasty Gravy serves up a menu of budget-friendly marketing, graphic design, and public relations services customized to your specific goals. Co-owned by a UCF graduate, Tasty Gravy can help refresh your brand, strengthen your online presence, or reinforce your company's message. Contact Tasty Gravy for help with your website, social media, marketing, advertising materials, and more. Visit TastyGravy.com. All right, we are back. Post game live. Andrew Fagley here. Knight Bingle. Roger as well here. And Kirsten. Well, I think that we're just going to wrap this up and we're going to give our final thoughts. Uh, my final thought of this entire thing it was a great season, uh, a great uh, 25, 20. I think it's 25. 25. <laughs> I lost count. Uh, I think 25 wins. Uh, it was a great ride. It's not over. We get a chance to start it all over again in August or September, whenever the season starts this year. I'm not exactly sure on the date. But it is 2019. This isn't the greatest way to start our 2019, but I can guarantee the football season of 2019 is going to be a lot better than today. It's not the end of the road for UCF. It's just the beginning. A hundred percent agree with that, Andrew. I think, uh, you know, the the game was missed opportunities. I think this team could have beaten LSU. Um, it just the ball didn't bounce our way this time. Uh, some of it was self inflicted. Some of it was not. But at the end of the day, uh, hat tip to LSU. They came in. They beat. Uh, they ended the streak. Um, however, I don't think that that says anything about UCF and uh, the, the current team and, and the potential going forward. Um, I, I'm looking at my Twitter, uh, you know, my Twitter feed here and a couple of things that, that kind of jump off the page. 25 wins in a row, made a lot of people angry, became a national brand, one team, one heartbeat, and one Ohana. So what have we seen this season? We've seen, uh, we've seen the highs. We've seen undefeated seasons. We've seen one of our fan favorites go down and someone that I personally have a connection to in uh, Mackenzie Milton. Um, we've seen his parents and him 
rally around this team. We've seen that team rally around him and win. And yep. at the end of the day, uh, the future is bright. And I'll leave, this, uh, I'll leave it with this quote from UCF football. It says, every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. And I think that's the perfect way to move into our 2019-2020 Do you have the ESPN alert that just came over for UCF on your phone? I do not. Oh, I freaking deleted it accidentally, and I have no idea how to get it back. But it said something about the streak ending, but uh, the foundation was set. And it was a really good quote, and I was going to read it to end this. Dang it. And I, don't, I can't says... find it again, so... Uh, the only one I have that comes up here is it says UCF streak dies and lost at LSU, but message will still resonate. Well, that's kind of that's kind of what they were saying, <laughs> <laughs> but but it was a little bit better of a message than that. So anyway, all right, guys, uh, it's been a great season. Nightline is going to continue, and we're going to be uh, we got all kinds of stuff for uh, for. Ever. We're going to have all kinds of stuff in the off season. So. So, so let me say this about that, too, and kind of echo what the fans have said. Okay, um, Knowing Trace and knowing Andrew and having had a small part of everything that they do here, um, they put a lot of time and effort into this to keep us connected, as, um, to borrow a phrase, Tenhana. <laughs> um, so um, I think I, I just want to echo and, and say I appreciate uh, what you guys do, and having been a part of that, and knowing you as people, they really are that passionate about UCF. They really do care that much about what we do, and they are providing a platform for us to be vocal, to be loud, and to believe. So, thank you uh, uh, for doing this, and I hope uh, you know I'm looking forward to hearing more. And uh, all you guys out there, engage, um, be part of it. Uh, it's a call to arms for all of us. Because we're what makes this thing go, and Nightline is part of what makes this thing go. So support these guys because they really do believe. All right. Thank you, Roger. Uh, you've been a big supporter the entire time, so I really appreciate it. With that, Happy New Year, everybody, and we will see you uh, on Sunday. Go Knights! Charge on. <laughs> Spirits will